Still planning that trip to Spain? In this video, I'm gonna break down the 11 new measures and three recommendations the Spanish government has implemented that might affect your trip. What's up guys, Patrick here, tour guide and your guide to Barcelona. And if you're new here, my channel is all about getting you ready for your next trip to Barcelona. So if you're looking to come, hit subscribe and you'll know everything you need to before coming. On Friday, the Spanish health minister, along with the autonomous regions, agreed on a plan that was going to try to help stop the spread of the coronavirus. Spain has become the country in Europe with the highest reported cases, and in order to try to stop that, all of the communities have agreed on a plan of 11 new measures and three recommendations to hopefully not have to go back to what happened in March when Spain declared a state of alarm. On March 14th, the Spanish government declared a state of alarm which basically allowed for them to control the sanitation decisions throughout the entire country. For most of the communities, that state of alarm started on March 14th and ended around the end of June. The Spanish government created a four-phase process of each phase lasting about two weeks, but in the third phase, the power to make sanitary decisions would be returned to each community. Communities like Catalonia decided to have that third phase only last 24 hours and then get back to this new normality. In order for those communities to continue to make those decisions and not return to the state of alarm, 11 new measures and three recommendations have been implemented to help stop the spread of the disease. With the opening up of borders, activities, and the arrival of tourism, Spain has seen the largest rise in the number of cases of any of the countries in Europe. Countries like UK and Germany, which usually provide a large portion of the tourism here in Spain, have put the country on their list of countries at risk requiring quarantine for those that return from Spain, making PCR tests necessary, or just recommending not visiting altogether. It's been a huge hit on the Spanish economy that overall depends on the tourism sector for 12% of its GDP. Many thought that we might be able to at least salvage part of the summer, but with more and more cases and more and more cancellations coming in as a result, the Spanish government decided to take these measures to keep cases down and avoid returning to what we'd had back in March. Keep in mind that masks now have been obligatory for weeks, starting here in Catalonia before moving to the other autonomous regions. Some communities, thank you Galicia, implemented some of these newer rules about a week ago and now have been adopted by the entire country. So what are these 11 new measures and three recommendations and how do they affect you as a tourist? To start off, not all of these measures are going to directly affect the tourism sector but should keep the number of cases down as a whole, or at least that's the hope. We're gonna start off with the measure that I'm actually most excited about. No more smoking in the streets. One of the days that I most remember, just like it was yesterday, was January 2nd, 2011. That was the day that it became illegal to smoke inside in Spain. Can you believe that? Still smoking inside up until that date. Now this is something that I'm really hoping we might catch on just going into the future, but for right now, we're gonna take it. The only thing is that it's still allowed to smoke in those streets if you can maintain that distance of two meters. The other big change is gonna be with nightlife, specifically with the closing of the discotecas, the clubs, and all of those dance floors. These are actually the places where Spain has seen the largest rise in cases. And there's a lot of coverage on the news of certain places that haven't been following the norms. We have large gatherings of people not keeping those distances, not wearing masks, and really just not acting safe. Now, a lot of these club owners are really upset with these measures because they feel like it's against their sectors. And while a lot of these places have respected these new guidelines, some of these places have just ruined it for everybody. So now you have cities like Barcelona that's really well known for its nightlife, that everybody coming in doesn't have access to that. Now, within those places that are allowed to stay open, restaurants and bars have to respect that distance of 1.5 meters, not only between the customers at the bar, but also between the tables. Apart from that, restaurants and bars can't have more than 10 people sitting at the same table. And lastly, for restaurants and bars, all places have to close by 1 a.m. The last customer can enter at 12 and no new customers can come in within that last hour. Now this is a measure that restaurant and bar owners have not been very happy with because those last couple hours with that last drink can really earn them a lot of money. Some places earning up to 20% of their daily income in those last couple hours. But with the closing of bars and restaurants at 1 a.m. and nightclubs being closed, a lot of people just take to the streets. And that's where you have another one of these new measures. 
Now with a lot of these nightclub places being closed down, we've seen a huge rise in the botellón, which is drinking in the street. That has become illegal across Spain and you can get huge fines if you're found drinking in the street. In Barcelona, you're not really allowed to drink in the street anyway, but a lot of times those tourists that come in buy those beers on the street. Remember, that can cause a huge fine these days. Now, when we entered into this new normality, a lot of the restrictions on capacity were placed for museums at around 50% that grew as we passed on through the stages, even different shows that you would go to. The new norm now is that all of those bigger spectacles need to be evaluated to see what the risk is of people going. One of the other measures implemented are PCR tests for at-risk groups. For example, just over this past weekend, Torre Baró in Barcelona had around a thousand tests given out for free to the people in this area. This neighborhood has about 500 cases per 100,000 inhabitants. The average in Barcelona right now is currently at 174. So you can see that this neighborhood has a higher number of cases, hence the tests. Just to put things in perspective, the World Health Organization has set the bar at 100 per 100,000 inhabitants. The last three measures might not directly affect you as a tourist, but have been implemented to help keep the cases down for the largest at-risk groups since the beginning, the elderly. The first is that visits have been limited to one hour a day. The second are the restrictions placed on those elderly residents leaving the residency. And the third has to deal with an increase in the first 72 hours of tests given to new residents of the elderly home. Now the three recommendations all agreed upon on Friday are going to be guidelines that hopefully most people will follow. For instance, hospitals and residencies need to do random testing to make sure that none of their workers are actually positive for coronavirus. And the other two are limiting social events to 10 people and keeping a stable group of contacts. What we've seen are actually about 35% of cases in Spain coming from a family environment. So trying to limit those number of cases and not meeting with people that maybe you haven't seen in the last couple days or even months. Everybody knows it's difficult, but with the percentage of cases coming from these types of contacts, these measures have been implemented. Remember, if you're still planning that trip to Barcelona or Spain as a whole, these are the new guidelines that should start kicking off within this next coming week in all of the different regions and that everybody that's in the country have to live by. But make sure you do your own homework with your home country and what they require before or even after coming back from Spain. Leave a comment below with what you think. Are these new guidelines in Spain going to help reduce the number of cases or are they going to deter tourists from coming over even more? As always, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.